Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Okay, if you notice, I'm back in the same closet. Um, when we last left our Intrepid Network admin, uh, I was replacing this switch. And uh, we did a very long video on me replacing this switch. Now to hear the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say. Most of y'all probably don't even know who Paul Harvey is, but I know there's a few of you out there that do, and you'll remember the rest of the story. So I replaced that switch, started putting things back on it. But you know what? Before I rush into things, I put everything back. I picked one. It was one that was a telephone and a PC that were, you know, on one port. So I plugged, uh, plugged that one in. Let me explain. We plug our PCs into our phones, and then the phones plug into the network port over here. So that's what I mean, a PC and a phone on one port. So I moved that port over, plugged it in, and I'm watching the link light, watching the link light, nothing happens. Um, that means the phone didn't power up. Well, heck, why didn't the phone power up? So I took my uh, handy dandy uh, net Alley Link Runner AT2000, not a sponsor, paid for this. So, took this guy and um, plugged it in, and it was showing uh, no information at all. Normally, this thing will pull the LLDP information coming from the port, it's being advertised, and I advertise all TLDs, every TLD that you can, I, I advertise on every port. Nothing, nothing was coming out. No power. No, nothing. So I took the, and I waited and waited. Light never came on. So I took it, moved it back. Within 10 seconds, the light came on, which means the phone had booted, powered up, and was, was doing its thing. Huh. So I called it, it stream back. We did some troubleshooting. And the thing wasn't applying any PoE power to the ports. In fact, it didn't think it had PoE power. We did some troubleshooting, did some troubleshooting. We ended up removing the, one of the power supplies from the thing, and PoE started working. So I said, well, that just sounds like you guys sent me a bad switch. This is the switch that was RMA. This is the brand new one that came from Extreme. Well, theoretically new. I'm, sus I'm starting to re suspect refurbished. Um, anyway, when that one power supply was removed, it was PoE power. Pushed it back in, no more PoE power. Pulled the other power supply out, no PoE power. Okay, that's that's a problem. I think it's the, the switch. He's like, no, no, no. I, he goes, I know it's going on, but I don't know how to fix it. So that was two days ago. And uh, he, he took a bunch of logs and everything and uh, yeah. They're still looking at it, apparently. I think he's probably on his weekend, because I didn't hear from him yesterday and I haven't heard from him today. Anyway, I got tired of waiting, being my normal patient self. So I went and I grabbed this switch here out of my spares pool. We uh, had a department that closed down, and uh, so there was a bunch of switches over there that were no longer needed. So I just grabbed them all, threw them in my storeroom. So this one is one that was out in the field, it was working before. I brought it back here, factory defaulted it. Put it in here in the stack, cabled it up, powered it up this morning. And uh, Extreme's uh, firmware did its uh, black magic and, you know, brought this guy back into the stack of, of it's now number four, it was number four, but brought it back into the stack, wrote the, uh, uh, configuration to it, rebooted it, it came up and it was it was fine. PoE power. Check PoE power. So but the thing is, I not only replaced this switch, but I replaced um, these stacking cables here in the back. There's a lot of cables there, you can't really see which one's which, but uh, the cables there on the far end are the stacking cables. So I replaced both stacking cables on on this guy here. This guy here. It's 
so that's the only other thing I replaced this switch and those stacking cables because I had a gut feeling we we have had a problem with this stack before with stacking cables um, dying and causing problems so anyway replaced all that fired it up this morning there's POE just like you'd expect and uh, got my um, my laptop plugged into it and it's working just fine um, let's see what else oh but it wasn't reporting LLDP information out this port so normally I plug this guy in and it'll display the switch name and the, the VLAN that the port's assigned to and all that stuff and that all comes from um, T, uh, LLDP advertising those TLDs that wasn't happening that was, an, that was a symptom on the other switch too uh, it wasn't reporting any of the TLDs here dang what could be the problem and then I found the problem this morning. I think I didn't I didn't catch it when it happened, but I think that the night that I came in and they called Extreme and he was trying all kinds of things, troubleshooting the problem with this switch, that he disabled all the LLDP. He disabled the LLDP on all these ports. It was explicitly disabled, even though I had the right config commands in for you know display all t advertise all TLDs. It, it wasn't because it was dis explicitly disabled on each port. So I explicitly enabled it on each port on this switch. And lo and behold, there's the LLDP information. And that phone wouldn't have worked without that. It needs POE and it also needs that LLDP information because that's that's how it knows how to find its, its server and what VLAN it's supposed to be on and all that good stuff. So uh, this is probably good to go. Um, oh, one other problem we had with that replacement switch is later in the day, you know, it wasn't putting out POE power, it wasn't putting out LLDP, because we didn't know why at the time, but we do now. Um, so we just left it idling in the stack, just like this one. It was plugged in, powered up, nothing was on it, no problem. So we thought, okay, we'll just leave that while Extreme checks out the logs. Well. So that was about 7.30 in the morning or so. Um, later in the day, after I had swapped that switch, about six hours later, this switch rebooted. Not this one, this one, slot number three. What in the heck? And so I came over and it was, it was down, it was, it had rebooted, it was getting ready to reboot again, it did reboot again, so I bet, I wonder if there's something else wrong with this guy. So I just powered it off. And number three, rebooted again, just like it you know, was doing when we got here. And then that was it, it stopped rebooting. Um, don't know. I took another show check and sent, sent that to Extreme, and I haven't heard back on that either. So that's why I think the, uh, the guy that the case is assigned to is on his weekend, or he's, he's out of office, whatever. So everything's running. I'm not going to stress over that. Uh, I'm going to let them stress over that. We, we need an answer. Why did this reboot? Because that's, that's not cool, man. Oh, so anyway. Yeah, that's. I was just going to make a, a short... You know, a short video on what happened here, but no, it's this is going to take more than a minute to explain, and a minute is all I get for shorts. So, um, yeah, but I think we're good. I am going to let this idle over the weekend, and if nothing else happens to the stack, I'm going to watch it today. Um, one of the things I've been watching is the uh, memory utilization, because that's what caused the original one to reboot. And uh, so I am, uh, okay, so right now it's using 131.514 memory. So let's look at it again. Okay, it's not going to, see before when that problem switches in there, this, this bottom number here, the total memory was, um, well, the HAL process was using up tons of memory 
and it kept incrementing. Every time you uh, refresh the display, it would increment, and it's holding steady at that number there. So uh, that's a good. So, and I, I periodically, I took a screenshot of what all the um, what all the memory numbers are. So I'm just going to periodically check that throughout the day. Um, I'm suspecting that for some reason. This guy kernel panicked too, and, and rebooted. Um, I haven't had a chance to go back and check the logs to see why exactly this one rebooted. See what precipitated it. So that's probably what I'll be doing for the rest of the morning. I'm going through the logs, and um, yeah, since this is my Friday, I work Monday through Thursday, 10 hours a day, and then I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. So this is my Friday. I generally don't do things on Fridays. So I did Thursdays. I did come in and power this one up, but I'm going to be watching that throughout the day. If it gives me any reason to suspect it, I'm just going to pull the power and shut it off for the weekend so we can have a nice quiet weekend. Because I'm not on call this weekend. The server guy is on call, and I'm sure he doesn't want to get called about a network problem. So, Alright, that's the rest of the story for this switch. Um, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated if anything else happens. Um, the plan now is just to uh, let it ride through the weekend. If everything's good, then uh, Monday morning I'll come in and I'll move all these cables back to that switch. So, anyway, that's all I got for this morning. As always, if you like what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell. And I uh, really appreciate you guys. Appreciate your prayer requests. Let me know if you got any prayer requests. And, uh, yeah, keep, keep doing your best. God bless. We'll see you all next week.